glory to Jesus Christ. Tennyson once wrote that a lie which is half a truth is ever the blackest of lies. That a lie which is a lie may be met and fought with outright, but a lie which is part of truth is a harder matter to fight. Part of the reason that I've uh, not made a video in a number of months is because I um, wanted to get away from a lot of the clamor and uh, um, noise of having to contend with lies out there and just kind of do my own thing and do what priests do. But um, after hearing so many uh, good people fall for such base lies of late, I felt called to, to make a video to set the record straight on a number of issues as I see it before God. And um, I think these pertain to uh, a matter of justice, justice for the innocent, um, my fellow believers in Christ, foremost. Um, secondly, justice for uh, the innocent in Ukraine, uh, whom I know and love and who are suffering because of the lies of ignorant men, uh, powerful ignorant men uh, here in the United States. I wanna speak in this video, not on things I am ignorant of, which are very long and it's an exhaustive list actually, but I do wanna speak on those things that I, I know a little bit about over the past 25 years of my life. Um, and that is specifically on the issue of of our Catholic faith and on the issue of Ukraine. Let's start with um, the issue of Ukraine vis-a-vis -vis Tucker Carlson, um, our fellow conservative believers here in the United States. Uh, we'll work our way into um, the issue of Pope Francis's recent comments uh, I'm not going to hold back. I want to speak the truth in all of its splendor uh, because Jesus Christ is the truth. Um, someone had once had this lovely quote about our Lord Jesus, and I, I wish I could remember off the top of my head who said it, but um, it may have been Dostoevsky or, or one of my great authors that I love. But this person said this, that the way Jesus spoke was, was so beautiful and so true that uh, even if he weren't the Son of God, uh, he would still believe him. Uh, even if he weren't true, uh, he would still believe him. Something to that effect. Um, such is Jesus Christ, that he is so good that no matter the cost, you follow him. But he is the truth. He is the way to the Father. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. There are people in this world who do not have truth as their object. They don't live in this world for truth. They, like Tennyson, as I started this video, are those who lie with a half-truth and this is the blackest of lies because these people will tell you 80% of the truth and you follow them along all the way, stage one, stage two, stage three, 14, 16, 18, all the way up to 80. And then on stage 81, they slip in a lie. And 80 out of the past 80 times, they check off the box. Yeah, they're right. And you let your guard down. And the remainder of it, they just keep feeding you lies. And some are better at it, and uh, they're more subtle. And instead of just feeding you 20% uh, lie, 80% truth, you know, they'll, they'll maybe even make it 95% truth. But the last 5%, when you really let your guard down, the last 5% will be profound lies that get to the nature of man and God. Tucker Carlson is one of these people, I believe, uh, when he speaks on issues 
pertaining to the war in Ukraine. Now, I know many of us uh, are sympathetic to what he says regarding uh, the culture war here in the United States on uh, various issues pertaining to, you know, transgenderism or, um, you know, the, the, the right to life. And uh, uh, he's on our side on these questions. Um, but he's not a minister of the gospel. Let me repeat that. He is not a minister of the gospel. He's not a reporter. He's an entertainer. And entertainers have as their object an audience, popularity, money. And so when Mr. Carlson speaks on Ukraine, as he does very frequently, if you listen to his channel and his interviews on uh, X, used to be called Twitter, um, this is um, an issue he hits again and again and again. And I want to warn people that do not be misled. Do not be misled. He's not an honest person um, when one considers, you know, what he said off the record that's uh, available for, you know, public consumption uh, with regard to the Dominion settlement uh, with Fox News. And, and there we see uh, his comments regarding, you know, Mr. Trump. And this is why I say I don't believe that he's an honest person. You know, he, off the record, he, he wrote in a text, you know, two and a half years ago, that we are very, very close to being able to ignore Trump most nights. I truly can't wait. Uh, I hate him passionately. This was all, these are all private texts, which came out in the Dominion lawsuit against Fox News. And regarding Trump's presidency, uh, again, in these private texts, uh, he said that uh, the last four years, you know, we're all pretending that we've got a lot to show for it because admitting what a disaster has been is too tough to digest. But come on, there isn't really an upside to Trump. Now, you would never know that Mr. Tucker Carlson said those words, judging by uh, the enthusiastic, friendly reception he gave to Mr. Trump um, during his recent interview with him on his show on X. It's like, you know, WWE wrestling. It's all, you know, fake and uh, in front of the cameras, they're buddy-buddy, uh, but off, they're, they're not. Or sometimes it's the opposite. And, uh, but with, with Tucker Carlson on the camera there with Mr. with President Trump, uh, I think, by the way, that the most effectively pro-life president this country has ever had, um, he's all, he's all, you know, blossoms and, and, uh, and, uh, and sugar. Uh, but off the record, we see what he says about the president. It's, it's that, that kind of, uh, dishonesty breeds contempt and it eats at the fabric of society. It's not consistent with our Christian life. Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So with that, when Tucker Carlson speaks about Ukraine, uh, there are some, not just errors, but I believe um, moments of, of clear in deception. On a, on a very profound level, and this is very dangerous with, with lives at stake. I'll give you um, just a few examples from my own experience, having visited Ukraine three times in the past year and a half. Um, I, I speak Ukrainian, and I went, my most recent visit, I went to, uh, to Kiev. Uh, I visited uh, the Kiev Monastery of the Caves, um, where Mr. Carlson says, um, that there is uh, persecution against Christians in, in Ukraine. Uh, and I went to the supposed hot spot of this persecution of Christians, and I asked Orthodox Christians there. I asked Protestant Christians there. I asked Catholic Christians there what they had to say about this talking head in America 
who claims that their country is a hotbed of persecution against Christianity, and they were in disbelief, absolute disbelief. Uh, I asked uh, an Orthodox man outside of the Petrushka Lavra, the Kiev monastery, the caves in Kiev, this, and he said there's, there's, no, there's no possible way that an honest reporter could say that. Um, I spoke with Russian Orthodox there who were very upset, obviously, with the decision of the uh, government in Kiev to restrict their complete dominance and control over the monastery caves. Uh, but even he admitted that, uh, you know, they're, they're not being uh, persecuted in the sense of, uh, as Tucker Carlson would uh, insinuate. It's a lie. It's a lie that Christians are being persecuted there. And we Christians, when someone lies, believe that uh, we are to make uh, reparation for our lies. So there is no persecution of Christians in Ukraine. There are those uh, clergymen who belong to the Russian Orthodox Church, the Moscow Patriarchate, who have cooperated with uh, the Russian military, and they have been dealt with under civil law, as is necessary during a time of uh, upheaval and war. Uh, they, they broke the civil law. They will suffer the civil consequences. It's the same here in the United States. If a, if a priest uh, commits uh, an offense, uh, the policeman who arrests him for uh, you know, breaking a window in a, in a hospital uh, isn't, isn't persecuting the priest. Uh, he's fulfilling the requirements of law, which is a trademark of a, of a well-ordered society. It doesn't matter what your rank is or what your faith is. If you break the law, then you suffer the consequences of breaking the law, no matter who you are. So that's the main lie of Tucker Carlson, that uh, uh, there's a persecution of Christians in Ukraine. Completely, completely, completely wrong. The other thing, um, and again, I, I've been involved in Ukraine since 1998, day in, day out. I'm a Ukrainian Catholic priest. I lived in Ukraine. My family is from Ukraine. Uh, two of my seven children were born in Ukraine. My wife is, is, uh, was raised in Ukraine. Uh, I have many friends, former students. Uh, people I love, people I know to be true and honest who live there and who give me daily, daily uh, updates on, on the events there. Another event that uh, Mr. Carlson is, is uh, wrong on, and there, there are many with regard to Ukraine, is the um, uh, Kohova Dam, which he claimed that the Ukrainians did, blew up without any evidence, no evidence whatsoever. Uh, but he makes, made this claim uh, a month and a half ago when it was blown up, which flies in the face of, of logic and clear reason. Uh, the Ukrainians are attempting to go south from their position into the direction of Crimea to cut the land bridge that the Russians have. To what end would they blow up the dam flooding their own pathway, preventing the plan. It, 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 it is absolutely ludicrous to think that they would do that. Uh, it serves them no possible advantage. Um, yet he has, Mr. Tucker Carlson, has persisted in this claim that the Ukrainians you know, resorted to terrorism. Now, this is unthinkable. This is a country that um, is not at fault in this war. Uh, this is a country that is uh, much smaller, much weaker uh, than Russia, yet has been the uh, target of his, cons of, of his consistent attacks. Um, this is the perplexing thing. It makes one wonder if he has been uh, paid off by the Russians to be uh, an agent of disinformation here. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? What? It's like blaming the rape victim. He points out to the imperfections of the Ukrainian government. Name one government that's perfect. He points out to these imperfections and just keeps hammering away at them as if 
Russia is the uh, country to be trusted here. Uh, this war is a war that is contraceptive and a, board, uh, a, a, a war that is the fruit of, an, a, of a contraceptive and abortion mentality. I say that because it is Russia that foisted on the world legalized state-sponsored murder of children uh, in the form of abortion. And they did this from the time of the 1920s through out the Soviet Union. And it became part of their culture such that uh, Russia now, after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, but it's still part of their uh, culture to practice abortion. Look at the abortion rates in, Ukraine, in, in Russia. And Ukraine isn't much better for that matter, or Belarus. But in Tucker, in um, uh, Mark Stein's book, America Alone in 2006, he lays out in very clear language that Russia will face a demographic winter very quickly, not if, but when. And when that day comes, it will be forced by necessity of mathematics to recoup population. And that means attacking its neighbors. Because it has such a massive population problem through high death rates, low life expectancy, low birth rates, uh, I think the highest aid rate, HIV rate outside of uh, Africa, um, and has high, extremely high levels of suicide, alcoholism, you name it, uh, brain drain, that they either do nothing and cease to exist, or they invade their neighbors. So this is written by Mark Stein back in uh, 2006, uh, a prophetic insight. Um, and he, he understands the situation in Ukraine. Um, he hasn't been given any credit for this, but he saw this coming. You know, he saw this coming uh, over uh, 15 years ago. And that's what we're facing. This is the outcome of an abortifacient mentality and a contraceptive mentality of removing the fecundity of life from families and the state interfering in this. And because of that, we are where we are. Mr. Tucker Carlson and others with him will point to NATO and say that the Americans and the West provoked this. That's not true. Don't listen to that. It's not true. NATO offered Russia a seat at the table back in 2000 when uh, uh, Putin uh, was just learning the ropes as president after Boris Yeltsin. He turned it down because he was required to stand in line with uh, other uh, applicant nations hoping to join NATO. If there were no NATO, if there were no NATO, do you think Russia would be doing what it's doing now? Of course it would. The name calling against NATO and the West is simply a smokescreen for Russia's real intent. Russia's real intent is to recoup the greatest resource on planet Earth, which is human life. To recoup it, and through that, to rebuild empire. Now, um, it's not only Tucker Carlson who has a problem uh, understanding the truth, but we need to speak very honestly as Catholics and uh, speak about Pope Francis. Before I do that, I want to speak uh, about my experience with Jehovah's Witnesses in Ukraine when I lived there. I came to know a, a very zealous, very intelligent uh, young man. His name was Abel in, uh, in Ukraine back in the late 90s, 1999, 2000, 2001. Mm. And I lost my respect for him. I lost my respect for him because when I put before him the incontrovertible truth of a matter of scripture and the incontrovertible truth of the inconsistency of his own religious organization, the Watchtower organization, the Jehovah's Witnesses, he refused to admit what was clearly before him. 
And I thought, please, God, I'll never be put in that situation where I will have to um, choose between, you know, defending the church and defending my conscience. I would hope that, you know, the church that I belong to, the Church of Christ, the Catholic Church, will 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 be consistent with, you know, what what I've always known to be true, and that her her public witness will will will, will be consistent with her teaching, um, and unfortunately, uh, with Pope Francis on the issue of Ukraine and Russia recently, uh, I think Catholics of conscience must speak truthfully if they wish to be heralds of the gospel in the coming months and years. I say this because once you lose your um, integrity, it is very difficult to gain it back. And when the Holy Father, the Pope of Rome, you know, speaks dishonestly, um, we do the church the papacy, uh, a favor by calling it out. And we do ourselves no favor by pretending it didn't exist. I'm speaking specifically about his comments uh, with regard to Russia. You know, he was speaking uh, about four days ago uh, maybe more than that now, uh, almost a week ago, um, to to some young people in Russia virtually. And he said to them, you know, don't forget your heritage. You are descendants of uh, Great Russia, the Great Russia of saints, rulers, the Great Russia of Peter I, Catherine II, that empire, educated, great culture, great humanity. Uh, never give up on this heritage. You are descendants of the great mother Russia. Step forward with it. So as the head of the, the visible head of the church, his job is not to call out secular leaders who were highly flawed. Anyone who knows a little bit of history of, of Peter the Great and Catherine the uh, Second know that, uh, that they're not models to be emulated by, by youth. Um, anyone who, 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 who has any inkling of this should be offended that this high-ranking churchman would do that. Now, nobody would complain if a Catholic Pope, uh, or no one should complain if a Catholic Pope turns and says, you know, look at the great Russian saints, and he names them specifically. Okay, here he just kind of goes over it and says saints rulers. But he, he makes the effort to name Peter the Great and Catherine the Great specifically. Nobody would complain if he said Seraphim Aserov, uh, Saint Tikhon, Saint Zenia of Saint Petersburg, Saint Sergei of Radonezh. Excellent. Although they're not in our canon as Roman Catholics, you Russian youth, go and imitate them. Absolutely. Bang on. But when you do this and you name Peter the Great and Catherine, uh, there are huge problems with this because. Uh, these two in particular, for people who are familiar with the history of, of Ukraine, these two in particular are the catalysts for uh, 17th and 18th century Russian imperialist expansionism. Uh, these are people who burned down uh, the villages of the poor. Uh, these are people who exterminated from their, their land uh, the institution of, of the Catholic Church in, in most villages. Um, they, they did permit the Roman Catholics a nominal existence in St. Petersburg uh, because they, you know, St. Catherine's in St. Petersburg is an outpost of, for the French and whatnot and a few Polish churches, but um, banned the existence of the Ukrainian Greek Catholics uh, in the case of uh, Catherine especially. Uh, you look at, at Peter, the, uh, Peter the Great's conduct to say nothing of his personal um, uh, immorality with women or Catherine's for that matter. Uh, but when you, you look at Peter the Great, it's unconscionable that a Pope would propose him as a model. But then again, this is a Pope who is uh, proposing um, 
that nothing is off the table with this upcoming synod on synodality, the meeting on meetings for meetings. Uh, Peter the Great, for those of you who don't know, uh, created, um, he abolished the, the patriarch and the, the synod of bishops, um, and he created in its place um, uh, a council uh, that would rule the Russian Orthodox Church, and he gave a, a very insulting name to it that would uh, you know, be very demeaning to religion. It was, uh, I forget the exact wording for it, but, you know, the, the Council for Outlandish Fools of, of Religion and uh, Absurd Joking. Uh, I think it was a long title, very similar to that. You know, the Council of um, something to that effect for, for outland, Outlandish Fools and Absurd Joking. His purpose being, of course, to ridicule religion. He was a child of the Enlightenment who sought to minimize religion and the influence that uh, Christianity in particular had over his people, most especially uh, the, the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, he had a low regard for Catholicism. Um, yet this is the, the man that's proposed as an example to, to Russia, uh, to the Russian youth by Pope Francis. It's unconscionable. It's unthinkable, uh, especially during this time of Russian expansionism. It is um, uh, a, f a form of um, uh, kind of uh, emboldening uh, the, 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 the Russian state in what they're doing. So all of this, my friends, is to say that we need to speak truthfully, and we're living in a time in which uh, truth is simply a commodity that you can play around with. It, it's not the end of your life. It's not the goal of your life to love truth, to know truth, to be truthful, uh, to see truth at the end of the line uh, when you will contemplate him. No, for the modern world, uh, truth is just something you can play around with because what they want is uh, uh, power power over you. Um, and don't think for a moment that just because you're conservative that, you know, the devil doesn't come after you. Uh, how foolish would that be, you know, if you were to think that, well, you know what, I, I don't believe in these liberal issues and neither does this guy, therefore I can believe what he tells me. <laughs> the devil goes after those people as well. Those people who think that they're preaching the truth uh, because they're, 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 they're conservative, the devil goes after them as well. And if you let your guard down, then you're going to be as de deceived as the next guy. The Gnosticism that surrounds us is thick like a cloud, like pea soup. There's a, a, a new Gnosticism in our world that um, we are not immune to, especially our, our fellow conservatives, which believe, who believe, sorry, that there is some kind of truth out there. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's not what these people in Ukraine are telling us, although they're, 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 uh, they, they speak their own language and they live on their own land. But I have a secret access. I have a secret source of wisdom, a secret knowledge, an inside track. Um, and, uh, you, you better listen to what I have to say. I have these, these, uh, you know, cute websites that give me all the secret information about, you know, how Russia is going to, uh, restore Western civilization. It can't even restore its own. It can't even restore its own. It has a, uh, religious practice rate of about 1.5%. Even secular Germany and France and Holland have higher rates of religious practice than Russia. Uh, but our, there are fellow uh, Catholics out there who, who see Russia as the great hope. Um, and it, this is Gnosticism. It's not based on reality. And you and I are called to live in the truth in reality. And reality is, is that Russia is a land of murder and deception. Go through the list. Don't think that Russia is going to help us. Russia is a land that murders the people who speak in truth about reality. 
you can go through the names of these, these uh, politicians, human rights activists, and journalists who over the past 20 years have tried to speak out and they go missing. They get five bullet holes in the back of their head and the coroner says it was suicide. They, they accidentally fall off of balconies on the seventh floor of an apartment building. Uh, the list is long. It's a long list of businessmen, lawyers, human rights activists, uh, people of conscience who've spoken up. And, and nobody, nobody like Tucker Carlson is willing to address that. If this is the, the, the country that is defending faith and family, then I don't want to have anything to do with it. It compromises our witness as Christians when we put our name on the carcass that is Russia. Now, when I say Russia, I'm not speaking about the, you know, the better elements of, of her history uh, or her many, you know, good people who are suffering there. Uh, but I'm speaking about the Russian state and those complicit in the murder of innocent, innocent people and who use the name of our God, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to further their godless war. So shame on Tucker Carlson. Shame on him for giving cover to this murderous regime who murders their own. You think Anna Politkovskaya, Litvinenko, you can go through with Magnitsky, you can go through with uh, Yushchenkov, you can go through uh, the, the whole list of uh, Boris Nemtsov. There's a long, long list of people who are not walking the face of the earth today because they dared to speak up against their own corrupt government for their violations against truth and reality. This is what we need from Tucker Carlson and from Pope Francis, is to speak truthfully about reality. Until that happens, you are part of the problem.